All right, my name is B Walk and welcome back to Cop Your Coin where I show you how to cop your coin in the fastest growing market in world history. Today, we are going to talk about in general cryptocurrency, specifically a little bit about Bitcoin since it's been on this run and kind of how to approach it. What what uh, what are my top ways of approaching as as far as an investor uh, and as a trader in this market? What what am I looking for? What do I think you should be looking for in making your investment decisions? And again, look into how to build your portfolio so that you could take advantage of this as a first mover in this particular industry. So, like I said, we're going to jump right into it. But, you know, I'm going to ask you to do three things. I'm going to ask you to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and hit that alert button so that you know when fresh content is out from Copy Your Coin. Okay, so let's jump on in. As you already know, I'm going to jump in first talking about uh, coin market cap. Okay, as you can see, here we are. We've got the current cryptocurrency listed at 2166. Market cap just under 200 billion at 194 billion. Bitcoin's been making a run, like I said, it's up 5% here today alone, 6,400. And if we look, you got the top 10 currencies. One of my favorites, Cardano, still in here in the top 10, even though it's come back some. Perfectly fine for me. Like I said, we jump into the charts and kind of take a look. You can see Bitcoin here versus the U.S. dollar. And this is on the Bitfinex change. And as you can see, Bitcoin has fully recovered from that dip it took back down there in November 2018, where it really kind of started. And we're right here knocking on the door of some resistance. So what has brought about this spur of movement right now? And kind of you guys remember there was a news article that hit uh, just yesterday, a couple of days ago about, was it uh, Binance, I think, getting hacked. Uh, for 40 billion 40 million dollars of bitcoin which basically came out to about 77,000 coins from one account uh cz the basically the ceo of, of binance said that this is uh you know certainly they understood what was going on when it happened they they are full oh, they're fully insured so they're going to reimburse this individual with their bitcoin and what was more interesting to me is that when that news hit as you can see look at the candles Bitcoin still could continue to act bulletproof, which is always a bullish sign. You know, usually it happens when you get, when markets go down on bad news or go flat on good news, then you're in a bearish bearish trend. And then on the opposite, when they go up on bullish news and flat on bearish news, again, you know, you're in a, bear, you're in a bullish, bullish trend. And that's where we are currently. Is, and you can see cryptocurrency, as a whole but specifically bitcoin moving farther so this is the technical picture right here as i said we got it. we're going to have major resistance here right at seven thousand. i don't know if we'll actually touch that yet but i think we're going to get past it so it's just a matter of time here is the question so what what should we doing now so i love this article with forbes again i'm going to put all the article descriptions they will be in the article urls will be in the description so don't worry about trying to catch that but it says right here, here's what investors need to know about cryptocurrency. And I love it because it's written from a hedge funds perspective. And they talked specifically to a hedge fund guy, Eric Kovalak, a managing partner from Vellum Capital, a hedge fund management firm specializing in crypto assets, says people are trying to translate the value of cryptocurrencies into a traditional model where they use something like PE or, you know, the price earnings ratio. While there is a, a calculation called MVT ratio, network value to transactions ratio, that mirrors a kind of PE for Bitcoin, its creator says it's not always a valuation metric for other cryptocurrencies. According to Mr. Kovalak, putting a value on cryptocurrency means evaluating the asset against a philosophy and technology. He says that investors should ask themselves if the cryptocurrency's fundamental structure provides a transparent, decentralized solution. Mr. Kovalak says a digital coin should also solve the problem that aligns with the philosophy of the distributed currency solution. For example, digital coin XRP solved the technological, technological problem of allowing Visa and MasterCard-like volumes of transactions on the network, which has been a challenge for the current structure of Bitcoin. However, XRP is on its own private permission ledger, not a distributed blockchain, and per Mr. Kovalak's view, not philosophically aligned to the distributed model advocated by many crypto experts, i.e. decentralization. So that's that's an interesting point. It, another point he brings talk, they talk about is going mainstream, using blockchain without knowing. It's kind of like a, a backdoor piece uh, where people are, are using the, the strategy or the technology of cryptocurrency and they don't even realize they're using it. 
uh, kind of the, 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 for example, they said Brave Software Incorporated is offering a browser that allows users to send money to websites they like. What consumers don't realize is that the Brave browser is integrated with the Basic Attention Token, a decentralized ad platform based on Ethereum. And while Brave Software is making the use of cryptocurrency more seamless, pundits and media outlets have given it mixed reviews. So again, that's another thing. Formulating a, a crypto investment strategy, and, and that's really the bulk of kind of what I want to speak about at this particular video. When I asked G. Mark Hardy, an expert on cybersecurity and president of the National Security Corporation, what criteria he would use to assess the value of cryptocurrencies, his answers included, look at the financial stability and maturity of the cryptocurrency's core developers and their sponsors, monitor the consumer acceptance rate over time, determine if the company behind the coin is solving a particular business issue. With more than 2,500 cryptocurrencies and growing, many simply emulate what an existing currency is already doing. And I agree with that 100%. If you look at that coin coin market cap, they've got listed, like I said, I think it's 2,100 coins listed on that alone. And I really barely pay attention to anything below anything that's not in, at least in the first page or the top 100. And most of that, I think that you're going to have maybe some outliers in that, maybe some out of the nowhere dark horses, if you will, that are going to that are going to take off. But the majority of your winners are going to come, in my opinion, from that top 100 and more likely from the top 20 or top 10. That's why I always start my videos. I talk about looking at that. That's what you want to build your portfolio from. And I think that it was interesting that they, they talk about in this particular article. Uh, it's, it's, it's the idea of how are you going to build, what do you, how are you going to build a portfolio, if you will? And for mine, I, I think this idea is a great one. For those seeking safety in numbers, Mr. Kovalec offers this novel idea for investing in a new, largely untested industry. Pick your top five crypto investments from among the largest cryptocurrencies measured by the market capitalization and manage them like your own mini crypto fund. That's really, I think novel is kind of tongue in cheek because that's what you do. I mean, you look at what are the quote unquote blue chips, if you will, in the market and put your money right there and look at what they're doing. Look at the people, the team that's involved and you want to you want to know who's involved. That's that's a that's a key point. Uh, you also want to know what what problem are they solving? And the idea is like how how what is the brand? What is the brand? Like the brand recognition in the market, and that kind of gives you an idea of where they where they stand. And then you can look at the price and say, do you think it's undervalued? Do you think it's overvalued? Do you think it's going to come in? Do you think it's going to take off? And I want to end this video talking about here on this uh, particular article. Bitcoin poised for parabolic bull run, says crypto analyst. Now, I thought this was really interesting. In a new interview with CNBC's crypto trader, Peter Brandt explains why he's bullish on the long-term prospects for BTC. You have to look really at the long-term chart that goes back to 2011, 2012. And what you'll see there is a magnificent thing that happened going into the 2013 high. And that was a parabolic move. And it was a parabolic move on a log scale. A parabolic move on a law scale is a magnificent thing. I think he loves the word magnificent. It may have happened only once in a decade. And so we saw the parabolic advance be broken. And then we saw the market from 2013 to 2015 into correction. And then it entered another parabolic move. So we had two parabolic moves in the same market in the same decade. That's just unheard of. And of course, it topped December 2017. We spent 2018 correcting. And I think there's a chance that we're going now into a third parabolic move of modern times. The idea that you can look at a market and consider it to be a long-term chart when it's only a decade long is pretty, buzzword, magnificent. <laughs> and then if you see the possibility of three parabolic moves in a decade's period, that's unheard of. That perhaps has not been seen since we had saw German interest rates in the 1920s. So this is unprecedented. So the big question in my mind is, are we going into a third parabolic move in Bitcoin, which should be absolutely historic. And for right now, I think the evidence comes down on the side that is a real possibility. Why does he say this? The moving average that I look at, which is a weekly chart moving average, turned up here about four weeks ago. The last time that moving average turned up was in early 2015 when Bitcoin went from $350 to 19,900, depending on what exchange you're trading. That is a quantum move. And so we have the same situation as we have seen an upturn in the long-term trend. In the short term, Brandt says he's, it's an open question whether Bitcoin will retrace and test his $3,000 bottom, which is the lows, or its recent low around 4,200. I think it's very interesting going forward. So 
this is an opportunity right here. I've, I've actually been buying some Bitcoin recently. And I, as you can see, it's been taking off. I do think it's going to move higher because I think you got a lot of smart money that's been sitting on the sidelines. And quite frankly, it's been trading Bitcoin off the books, OTC, which is, means over the counter, off of exchanges. So sometimes what you see in the charts is a little misleading. You're not seeing people accumulating Bitcoin because it's happening off of the charts. They're not, they're not even tracking it. And so now all of a sudden we see Bitcoin starting to rally. It's not a, there's no randomness to any market. And, and, and quite frankly, this market is still manipulated, you know, and I know that even the, the equity market can be manipulated to some degree. But anyway, so I wanted to bring this real quick video to you to kind of give you squared away on how to be approaching this investing. I will ask you a question. And, my, and here's the question of the day for me. What are your top five cryptocurrencies going into 2019? And where do you think they're going to be at the end of this year? So going through while we're here in May, you know, and we're climbing into the summer months and we're going to get in here into the fall pretty soon. And if, if the crypto market is, is doing like we think it's going to do and looking, preparing like it's going to move higher i think that even with bitcoin rallying i think it's going to pull some altcoins with it specifically altcoins that have their business together cardano certainly struggling right now and i think we, i talked about that in my last video because they had delayed shelly i think when shelly comes aboard they take off as well but those are two of mine well i want to know which what are your five and then i'll, I'll tell talk about all five of mine in another video okay thank you for joining me and i'll see you next time on copy your coins